Hello friend, how are you doing? Let me ask you a question. What is your purpose in life? Solomon, one of the richest man on earth who lived and one of the wisest man on earth, he said in his conclusion, when all has been said, heard, he said the conclusion is fear God and keep his commandments because this applies to every person for God will bring every act to judgment. Everything which is hidden whether it is good or evil. God brings everything into judgment which is good or bad, which is uh, hidden or which is visible. So, we need to understand God's purpose in our life to live better lives. The Bible says in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6, verse 33, But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. When we seek God's kingdom and his righteousness, all things will be added unto us. And Mark's Gospel, chapter 12, 30 says, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Therefore, I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God, which is your spiritual act of worship. People say the purpose of my life is to worship God. In order to worship God, we need to offer our body as a living sacrifice to Him. Especially there are four things that we need to remember in the purpose of our life. Number one, fearing God and seeking God. And number three, loving God. And number four, living sacrifice, a holy life. Fearing God seeking God, loving God, and living a holy life. These are the four purposes in our life. God created us to fear Him, to seek Him, to love Him, and to live a holy life. What's your purpose? I want to say the purpose of our life is to lead others to God. Leading others to Christ is the main purpose in our lives. That's the reason God saved you and uh, God's provided all the resources and He made us good so that we can help others to know Christ. And number two, living testimony. Jesus said, you are the light of the world and you are the salt of the earth and we are the living testimony for God. That's the reason Romans 12, 1 to 2 says, Brothers, I urge you in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is the act of spiritual worship. And encouraging brethren, we need to encourage others. In this world of turmoil, we speak words that discourage others. I hurt no one. We should not hurt people with our words, but rather we can affirm people and with our encouraging words. And number, that's the reason Bible says, And he gave some as apostles, and some as prophets, and some as evangelists, and some as pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of the service, to the building up of the body of Christ. We are created. We are saved to the building up of the body of Christ by whatever joint applies according to the proper working of each individual part causes the growth of the body for the building up of itself in love. In love we need to build others and let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds not forsaking our own assembling together as is the habit of some but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the body drawing me near. My purpose of life is to encourage others, not to pull others down. 
God created us to help others, encourage others, motivate others so that we will be the light of the world. And working in the congregation. Why did God place us in the church? To help the church. We need to uh, have that mindset to cooperate. And the fourth one is giving time, talent and our dollars, rupees are our treasure. God gives us so that we can give. God blessed Abraham and said, I bless those who bless you and I curse those who curse you. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you. God blesses us so that we can bless others. If we keep everything for ourselves, it stagnates. And we need to give our time, talents and treasures for God. Instruct those who are rich in this present world not to be consulted or to fix their hope on the uncertainty of riches, but on God, who richly supplies us with all things to enjoy. Instruct them to do good, to be rich in good works, to be generous and ready to share, storing up for themselves the treasures of a good foundation for the future so that they may take hold of that which is life indeed. First Timothy chapter 6, 17 to 19. Paul says, instruct people to be rich in doing good. Instruct people to be generous. Instruct people who, so that they can ready to share. And today we are living in a postmodern culture where there is so much desire for possessing more and more. We want to keep more for ourselves and we hardly share with others. God has called us to share our resources for the kingdom of God. So then, while we have opportunity, let us do good to all people and especially to those who are of the household of the faith. Galatians chapter 6 verse 10. Pure and undefiled religion in the sight of our God and Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their distress and to keep on oneself unstained by the world. What is the religion in fact? The real, the real bhakti, the real spirituality motivates us to share, care others, those who are in the need. These are the four things I just wanted to encourage. Leading others to Christ. What is the purpose of our life? Number one, leading others to Christ. Living a testimony, living a life that can give light to others and encouraging the brethren, working in the congregation and giving our time, talents and treasures. Thank you, brothers. Thank you for listening. You are listening to Bhakta Putana. God bless you.